I think we do have a body of factual objective evidence in the form of footprints, hair that can't be attributed to other forms of wildlife. We have vocalizations that defy identification, uh, and so on. Uh, that's the start, short of a, bi a physical specimen, uh, of the search for the answer to this age-old question of the legend of Sasquatch. Is there a biological species behind the legend? That's where legend is. Greetings and welcome to the Vortex. I'm your host, Daniel Allen Jones, and I'm very honored to be here with Dr. Jeffrey Melvin. Absolutely, pleasure. To be here. It's an honor to be here with you. You have done some incredible work, and I think it's uh, really important to mention that you're also an academic. You're a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University. That's correct. And I think it's something that really sheds a lot of light on the area of Sasquatch, Bigfoot, cryptozoology in general, because there's so much rhetoric out there. There's so many great stories, but we really need to have people doing the work that helps provide some real substantial proof, evidence, whatever it might be, to show that there are some mystery creatures out there. So when we're dealing with the study of cryptozoology, why would you say that it might be important to consider this field of research? Well, just as you point out, we're continually finding new evidence of new species. It's an ongoing process of exploration and discovery. So there at the fringe of, of zoological research is cryptozoology, which often relies on anecdotal evidence from eyewitnesses or from uh, uh, the traditional knowledge of indigenous peoples who are often very familiar, almost without exception, very familiar with their own uh, natural landscape and, and the species that are found. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's an important element that uh, is sometimes overlooked. I think it's really important to see that while a number of people go out into the field looking for different things, this almost is something we don't see as far as getting reports in to take place when you have hunters out there not having anything to do with Bigfoot or Sasquatch, they end up having an encounter that might change their life. And there are some cases where people will see things and they already think about Bigfoot or they're more apt to look in that direction, they might misidentify some of these sightings. What is your take on how people can misidentify some of these encounters for bears or possibly other creatures? Well, uh, you're right. Given the rarity of, of these potential cryptids, uh, the, the likelihood of encountering them is, is very low and often happens by chance. And so, you know, the, the and as you point out, it can be a very life-changing experience. Whenever an unusual experience occurs, one has to weigh, uh, especially under less than ideal conditions, one has to weigh the probabilities that this is an unusual, singular event versus uh, just a misidentification of it. Uh, so, you know, when you consider there's probably 100 to 200 black bear out there for every well, set What's the big one you guys have, like, flooded everything? Hypothetically uh, speaking, uh, uh, which is more likely if, if your observation is just a flash of dark fur or an upright <laughs> figure <laughs> just rain, so and there's no distinctly in the distance, uh, it's incumbent that you first eliminate the more likely explanation for four hours in before resorting to a more extraordinary explanation. Right. So you know, people like things to be more exotic than they actually are. And some people out there, everything they see is Bigfoot. You have to be careful about that. And to mention how we sometimes look at things and it can be very disambiguous, it can be hard to tell what exactly we're looking at. It's something that is already a very lofty field. There's a lot of rhetoric, but there is a great deal of work being done to show that there are what you refer to as relic hominids out there. I think it's important to see that. That's one right now. Yeah, <laughs> tearing stuff up. So, since we're here at Alien Con, it's interesting to see that we have some representatives in this area, and I think it's important to also acknowledge that there are a lot of people who, and I'm almost reluctant to say, we consider the Bigfoot or Sasquatch 
might be able or have some kind of alien qualities or brought here. What is your take on that? Yeah, well, I, I hope that my presence here isn't taken as an acknowledgement of that, of that uh, hypothesis. I, uh, again, I'm, I'm approaching this as an anthropologist and biologist, and so it's really incumbent on me to first uh, demonstrate the shortcomings of, a, of the, the simpler hypothesis that this is a biological species and before advancing the more complex, uh, say, alien origins, it is more complex or more unusual or extraordinary. Uh, everything that I've seen in the anatomy that we've been able to use, the trace evidence and physical evidence that we have, it points to just another biological species, a primate in North America, which shouldn't be that unusual. In fact, you know, some of my colleagues have pointed out that we, we might otherwise ask, why isn't there a large primate on this continent when there are, they are even found on others? Exactly. I think it's one of the important things to notice is that it's not an isolating event. There are sightings and encounters all over the world. And while you've put together some great information and books, I really enjoy your field guides here because this is encouraging people to get out, to be able to have a way to make sense of what they're seeing out there, whether they're tracks or scat samples, possible hair and DNA. So how can people use this to kind of make sense of navigating their way out here in the field? Well, it's designed to be uh, a guide in the sense of a, a counter. In other words, we, we, uh, we have a limited knowledge base of uh, uh, factual knowledge base of uh, what uh, Sasquatch is and how it is limited. We have lots of experience uh, from, from anecdotal visits and observations. But this gives you, uh, as a citizen scientist, as I like to put it, uh, uh, some of the tools that you might need for identifying the Sasquatch, uh, differentiating from that bear that we talked about earlier. Right. Um, likewise, the, the trace evidence, the footprints, how do they differ? Um, how does one make a footprint pass to document? Documentation is really important. I mean, if, if you don't document your encounter, your experience, your evidence, it remains just a story, right. and uh, that's only worth so much, not nearly the value to um, our uh, furtherance of the understanding of these creatures that uh, good documented evidence uh, provide. And so I encourage people to, you know, before they rush to judgment or draw conclusions, that they ask themselves, you know, am I being critical? Have I considered the simplest explanations for what I know? Does this add meaningfully to the discussion about the possible existence of these creatures? Or is it just going to muddy the water with more ambiguous, you know, uh, uh, inconclusive data? Right, so in closing, there are a lot of people out there who think Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and other cryptozoological creatures out there are just nonsense, imaginative, and otherwise just made up stories. What would you say to people of that orientation or mindset? Well, everyone's entitled to their opinion, obviously, but uh, I would hope that, that every responsible person would base their opinion on some fact instead of just fancy uh, of one sort or another. I think we do have a body of factual, objective evidence in the form of footprints, hair that can't be attributed to other forms of wildlife. We have vocalizations that defy identification, uh, and so on. Uh, that's the start short of a, bi a physical specimen uh, of the search for the answer to this age-old question of the legend of Sasquatch. Is there a biological species behind the legend? That's where legend is. <laughs> so where can people find out more about your work and keep up with everything you have going on? Right. Well, a good start is is the, the book that I've written by that title, Sasquatch Legend of Sasquatch. Um, I also edit an online journal a scholarly journal with uh, referee contributions, papers, book reviews, news items, editorials. So a lot of good information and good direction, good evaluation of other sources of information. That's available online, uh, free access, and it's uh, www.isu.edu forward slash RHI. It's the Relic Hominoid Inquiry. Perfect. Well, Dr. Nelgen, it's been an honor to be able to have you here. We're making new discoveries every day. We'd like to work together to find out what's next. 
Remember, we won't know if we don't go, so we'll see you in the vortex. If you liked this video, be sure to check out our other content and get connected on our page and social media sites. Every day, new discoveries are being made all across the world and beyond, so let's work together to find out what's next. And remember, we won't know if we don't go. I'll see you in the Vortex.